regularly scheduled meeting of the City Hills Board of Education come to order. The first order of business is to approve the agenda as it's laid on the screen. Do we have a motion to approve? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. The next is the approval of the minutes from the last two meetings that have been distributed beforehand. Um, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? And Dr. Freeman. All right. We are beginning today the first of two required budget hearings uh, for the fiscal year 20 budget. And Ms. Courtney Brown is going to lead us to the Brown, take it away. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, today's a perfect day for this presentation I'm going to I'm sorry, but um, today I am presenting the FY20 proposed annual budget. I have provided the required budget documents, um, which is this booklet here that was on the table as you come in, and there's some response forms if anyone has questions that they would like me to answer um, at the second budget hearing, which is on September the 9th. Um, the proposed annual bu budget booklet includes information on how the budget is prepared, a glossary of terms, and um, the supplemental green sheets provide information on how the foundation program is um, allocated to each of our schools and our en enrollment and our um, teacher units that are assigned to those schools. Our fiscal year is 10-1 to 9-30. Revenue estimates are based on prior year collections and projected increases from county and city finance departments, along with our state allocations. Financial resources have been allocated to the various programs of the school system in an effort to best serve the needs of the student body. The budget is prepared with a conservative approach. Revenues are estimated with a slight increase, and expenditures are based on actual experience and planning with directors and principals. Budget hearing for all about code zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think everybody will need to <laughs> Okay, so here is the proposed FY 2020 general fund budget. State revenues from the foundation program are allocated to us in an amount of $38,479,286. This is our allocation from the ETF based on our reported average daily membership on last year's enrollment after the first 20 days of school. Federal revenues um, are zero are are not reported in the general fund. That's why they're zero right here. We do receive federal funds, but they're reported in the special revenue fund, which accounts for proceeds of specific revenue sources that are legally restricted to expenditures for specific purposes. Um, the largest federal revenues that we receive are for the special education program and the child nutrition program. We received about $2 million of federal money last year with approximately $1.25 million of that is for special education. And for 2020, we have about $1.3 million budgeted out of the general fund to fund this mandate. We are anticipating local revenues of $39,882,720. This is primarily from ad valorem taxes and a small amount from city sales tax of about $350,000. For um, FY 2020, we have projected a 2% increase on current year's collections based on expectations of increased overall taxes from city and county agencies. Our expenditures are reported based on functions of use, or in other words, the activities for which they were incurred. We have budgeted expenditures for instructional services in the amount of $49.7 million and $10.8 million for instructional support service. Expenditures that are included in instructional support and instructional services are used for salaries, for instructional and instructional support staff, instructional supplies, testing supplies, and health and attendance services. These make up about 75% of our total expenditures. We have expenditures of operations and maintenance in the amount of $8.3 million. This includes salaries, utilities, insurance, maintenance and custodial supplies, 
SROs, building and equipment repairs, and maintenance contracts. And this is about 10% of our total expenditures. General and administrative services um, of 4.4 million include our central office salaries and benefits, professional services such as attorneys and audit fees, technology services, office supplies, and district travel. This is about 6% of our total. We have capital outlay budgeted of 1.7 million. Um, these are the items that will be um, funded with our ET ETF advancement and technology fund allocation. And this was about 1.9 million. Um, when Dr. Freeman presents the capital plan, he'll talk more about that and go into more detail about what we're gonna spend that on. Okay, and so up here we have other fund sources and uses. Um, this is our transfers in and out between the local schools and then our transfer out um, for our CMP pass through pass for salaries and benefits. It appears, if, <coughs> it appears that we have a budget deficit of $1.8 million. Um, this is due to the fact that we received our ETF money of $1.9 million in 2019, but we're budgeting those expenditures to be paid out of 2020. So that money is included in our 14 million, our beginning fund balance that we're gonna start with on October 1. So if you take that out of the equation, we will end up with a slight budget surplus of about 125,000 for 2020. And it will leave us with um, 12.3 million in fund balance, which is um, more than two months of our operating expenditures. Okay, so I did this chart just to illustrate that we get 49% of our revenues from the state foundation allocation and 51% comes from local tax sources. And this chart just shows our expenditures by function. Um, you'll see that instructional and instructional support service make up 75% of our budget with operations and maintenance next at 10%, general administration at 6%, debt service at four, and then capital outlay and the ETF um, appropriation and transfers is 2%. Here's another chart of our expenditures. It shows it a little different way. Um, personnel expenditures <coughs> make up 79% of our budget with um, professional services and utilities making up 9%, materials and supplies and debt service both at 4%, and then we have transfers in and out or in between schools and capital outlay for 2%. Okay, so here is how our FY20 budget compares to last year. We have an increase in foundation program allocation of about 2.5 million, and we have budgeted a 2% increase in ad valorem taxes to make up our um, $3 million increase in revenues. The budget for instructional services increased 4.6 million due to the 4% raise and step increases. And then we have more accurate budgeting for contracted personnel, substitutes, and supplements. Um, we had a slight decrease in instructional support expenditures due to a decrease in contracted services for, for special ed and more conservative departmental budgeting. Operations and maintenance increased about 1.2 million. This is due to the step, raise and step increases, um, increased utilities at campuses, um, increased security and maintenance costs for new campuses. And it also includes um, two additional SROs that, um, that's an increase of about 120,000 from last year. And we currently have 12 SROs with three that are funded by the city. And we budget a total amount um, of about 738,000 for our SROs. Um, our auxiliary services increased due to a need um, for an additional bus driver and increased bus operating cost. And then, um, Courtney, real quick, the uh -huh. state, um, none of the state allocation covers SROs, correct? That's all local. That's right. 
And then um, our general and administrative budget went down um, due to just more con conservative departmental budgeting. Um, our debt service decreased a little bit out of the general fund because we're offsetting some of that with our capital purchase funds that's going to, that's accounted for in the capital projects fund. Um, we had a slight increase in our st state preschool allocation that caused the other budget to increase. And then transfers decreased because last year we funded $22 million for capital projects. Okay, so um, this is just a little bit about how um, the budget process begins. Um, this information comes from our state allocation sheet, which can be found on the Alabama Department website. I gave y'all a copy. Um, the first section of this information sheet relates to the system ADM and state allocated program units. You'll see we had a decrease in ADM of 12 from last year and the state determines funding for teacher units by dividing the ADM in each grade by the FY20 grade divisor. And um, well, and even though our ADM dropped a little bit, we still had an increase of two teacher units because of the way they, they've changed the divisor a little bit to our advantage this year. Um, principals are allotted per school site and assistant principal, principals, counselors, and librarians are allotted based on school ADM. Okay, this is our foundation program funded units by school. This is from the um, State Department unit allocation to identify ADM and program units allocated for each school. You'll see how that's, this is just how the state assigns the units. Okay, so more um, on salaries. This is how our salary budget is spent. You'll see we spend 63% on teachers, 5% on principals and assistants, 3% on counselors, 1% on librarians, 2% on other certified staff, 2% on supplements, and 24% is for support staff. This um, chart shows all employees paid with federal, state, and local funds. And this is summarized information from the green sheets in this public document. Um, you'll see that we have about 66 locally funded teachers, and we spend about $4.5 million in local funds to um, support those salaries and benefits. Okay, so the state allocates amounts from the foundation program for specific uses. This section is summarized from our state allocation sheet as well. From the state foundation program, we received $24.9 million for salaries. This is an increase of almost $1.5 million from the prior year. This amount is determined by the calculated number of state units converted to dollars using the minimum salary matrix. The state mandated 4% raise cost us approximately $650,000 from, from our locally, for our locally funded employees. We received $9.7 million for fringe benefits, and this is an increase of about $378,000 from last year. This allocation is to fund the fringe benefits related to the salaries of the state earned units, and these benefits include the employer's portion of FICA and Medicare tax, the retirement systems um, contribution, health insurance of $9,600 per year, and then t we fund, um, and it funds two personal and five sick leave days at a rate of $80 per day. We received $8.7 million for other current expense. This is an increase of $547,000 from last year. Our allocation is based on the total state allocation, which is a fixed amount determined annually by the leg legislature. Each school system is given an allotment based on their share of total units. And this money has more flexibility. It can be expended for operating expense or salary expense, but we use ours for support salaries. We also had an increase in classroom instructional supply money. It went up. Um, as you'll see in red, um, we got $600 per unit this year 
versus 537 last year. Technology was increased to 350 from 300. Library enhancements from 158 or from 97 to 158, and professional development from 90 to 100. Textbooks from 70 to 75. And all of these rates are given to us per unit with the exception of textbooks, which is allocated per ADM. And then we have our local foundation match of 7.2 million. And um, this is our 10 mil equivalents and local property tax that each school system commits to the foundation program. Okay. Um, most of our revenues earmarked for special purposes are accounted for in the special revenue fund, as I explained earlier, for special ed and CMP. Um, the state allocates amounts from the foundation program to be used for specific purposes as well. These amounts are included in the general fund budget. Um, we received $294,000 for school nurses, $61,800 for technology coordinator, $311,000 for transportation, about $46,000 for at risk, and about $22,000 for career tech. So for nurses, the State Department gives a set amount per district and then an amount per student. In addition to the state funds we receive, we spend $270,000 in local funds to provide a school nurse for each campus. We received an operating allowance of $312,000 to be used for the school system's buses. Um, we, we earn money based on the number of buses running qualified routes and also includes allocations for fuel based on annual route miles. The at-risk allocation of 46000 is a statewide appropriation determined by legislature in the ETF budget. The number of at-risk students are determined at each school by calculation that includes the number of free and reduced lunch eligible students in system ADM. This allocation is used for tutoring students have been, who have been determined to be at risk of dropping out of school or who are performing at an academic grade level below current placement. And lastly, um, this is our total debt serv service payments on all debt. We uh, fund about 3.3 million of this from the general fund, and then the remaining 1.8 million is funded with our state capital purchase allocation. That allocation amount for 2020 was 1.8 million with a 460,000 local match. That is the end of my budget presentation. If anyone has questions, I know Dr. Freeman's going to come up in a minute and give the capital plan. Is that one up? Is that one up? Right it is. <clears throat> a couple of comments on this while I went setting up the uh, the graph that you saw, the pie chart that you saw that indicates this local state match. We're above 50% local revenue. That's fantastic. That is a commitment that our city's long time made uh, through property tax and taxes that are pay other taxes that are paid. So that's a significant benefit to our system. So what that results in, among other things, are 56 local teachers, additional counselors, additional nurses, all SROs, uh, many of the programs that we're able to offer. So you, you know those things. I just think it's important to point out. Uh, another significant part of this budgeting process, point number two, is the 2% increase we believe is, in, is conservative. Yes. Uh, but the reality is that 2% is about what it took to fund the 4% raise. Uh, so that did not leave us much room. So we, you know, we're optimistic, the economy is moving well, but we want to be conservative in that. But mindful that we have a tighter budget with debt service uh, as it is now. Uh, and so that's an important point to make. 4% to debt service, that is, do we know how that kind of stands across similar schools, systems like ours? Um, it seems like that would be kind of low. Yeah, I think we are pretty low just from things that I've seen, you know, in my past auditing, but I, I don't really know how, you know, what the statistics are. There's a little lower last year, and we took the additional debt on this year to finish the projects. Uh, that, you know, gets into some of the general fund and capital expenses, as I'll mention in a few minutes. So we're mindful that our budget while conservative is, is tighter than it's been in some years. Uh, but uh, we feel comfortable about it that we got. 
And so the third thing I would mention to you is Courtney mentioned a more accurate budgeting process that she implemented this year with departmentalized budgeting that's helped us get more accurate numbers, which I think has actually tightened up uh, the difference between revenue expenditures, uh, some not to our favor, but at least we have more accurate information. So uh, that those are three points to make about that. The last one I'd make is this has been an exceptional job that, that uh, Ms. Brown has done. This uh, is a very good budget, considering the impacts that we have dealt with with, with debt service and with raise, uh, and to, to pull this to where it is. I'm real pleased with that. It's a very good job. And I always love every year when we do this, the, the locally Funded yes. things, you know, because I think when you're at the ball field and parents are like, what it, what do we get for our tax dollars? I mean, you know, SROs in all the schools and 60 extra teaching units and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's that's the real value. That's it. Absolutely, that's critical. Thank you. Thank you. Quickly on capital funds, just a few things about capital funds that Ms. Brown mentioned. We primarily get our dollars this way through public school funds or PSF annual allocations. That's really based on our ADM. State advancement and technology funds, that's limited. We received a little last year. We're receiving 1.922 this year. We'll receive some next year. After that, I don't think, I don't look to, to see that we'll get any after Y21. And then we also get some from general fund, and that's largely debt service. All right, just a few things to point out about this is that when you're doing capital planning, you look at three different drivers. One is student enrollment, one is facility assessments, and one is education programming. This, this capital plan that we are in the midst of and will be finishing next year has been largely about student enrollment, to some extent facilities assessment, but we had to accommodate a growing number. Enrollment has stabilized in our system the last three years. Uh, we are not tracking as fast as our demography said it would a few years ago. That's positive for us. So what we begin to do is turn our attention toward the assessment and programming aspect of capital planning. The, Focus this year will be on improvements related to safety, technology infrastructure, uh, heating and air upgrades, cafeteria, kitchen improvements, parking lot improvements, uh, interior renovations at Dolly Ridge East and West, and those are areas that are that were once libraries or currently are libraries. There are different spaces that have opened up because of new cafeterias that uh, the schools will be looking at with our architect to begin to design good uses of those spaces, uh, how we work, what we do in preparing our freshman campus, and then completion of the current projects we have. I won't go through this because you've got the detailed list and you also have the five-year plan, uh, but I will tell you that these plans are based on a lot of data that we've gathered this past year. Uh, this is an iterative document. Uh, while it's part of the approval process, we still have a significant amount of assessment we want to do on our current buildings to dive deeper in the coming years for a long-range plan. We'll be doing that this fall in, in designing a, a, a uh, what I think will be a more accurate look at the five-year plan. But you can largely see uh, what we're doing and where the money's going. I will point out to you the $1.770 million in debt service that uh, Ms. Brown mentioned earlier. It is about midway down. Uh, we have some limited dollars for other projects that you can see that aren't exactly defined. They're improvements for interior, exterior, hardware, and so forth. Uh, but this is largely it. And to the right side, you can see where the fund source is. It's either advancement technology dollars, local, or public school funds. And you have the complete, she, they have the complete yes. five-year document to pack as well. All right. Okay. Questions, comments at this point on budget? No. We don't motion to approve that because we have more hearings. The second hearing again on September, September 9th. Do you answer questions that are posed at that point and then I'll make a recommendation to you on the budget. All right. Okay. We'll move to item five, not to give Ms. Brown any break. <laughs> Talk financial yeah, get some water. Yeah. Back break. Here we go. Okay, so um, you have the July 2019 financial statements and check register for your review. I would like to point out, um, as of July 31st, we have received 97% of our local tax revenues. At this point in August, we've received 98%, so um, we've got about three months of collections that we are still expected to receive from the city before year end, so we, we're tracking right along to receive 100% of our budgeted local revenues. And total expenditures compared to last year at 91% as of July 2019 compared to 86% in the prior year. 
but the reason for this variance is because the transfer to the debt service fund for the June 2019 payment has already been recorded and in the prior year it was, it was not recorded until year end so that um, when you add that back to the July 2018 expenditures we're tracking right along at 91 percent same as we would have been last year and all board bank accounts have been reconciled as of July 31st 2019. I want to point out that that end of year balance and when we finish construction is in keeping with what was the commitment of the board to try to stay at a two month reserve yes. and we, we will stay there. The state requires one month, we will have two months and so we feel, feel comfortable to finish up. So I recommend the board approve the financial statement for July 2019. For the superintendent's recommendation, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Item six, I recommend the board approve the consent items related to out-of-state and overnight field trips, disposal of property, and student transfers for the 2019-20 school year. For the superintendent's recommendation on consent items, we have a motion to approve. So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item seven is unfinished business. We had the first readings for job description on July 22nd at our last regular board meeting and I recommend the board approve these updated job descriptions as submitted. These are on the table the last yes. time. For, yeah. Yes. Um, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation around job descriptions. Do you have a motion to approve? Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item eight under business. Item A. I recommend the board approve change order number one with Williford Orman Construction LLC in the credit amount of $15,480 for modifications to visitor side bleachers for Best Davy Hills High School as submitted. Per the superintendent's recommendation around the modification of the bleacher contract, we have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Questions? Well, yeah. It, I'm responsible for all the credit ones. <laughs> yeah, Patrick's got all the, Patrick's got all the overages. <laughs> this one's mine. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Can, you, can you explain credit on this? It was an allowance that was not utilized. Yeah. The project. We still made them uniquely uncomfortable for Hoover fans, though, correct? That's right. Okay. Yeah. As long as we got that feature right. that included. <laughs> that expectation has been met. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. That's a joke for the record. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Item B, I recommend the board approve change order number 10 with Blaylock Building Company Incorporated in the amount of $71,470 for renovations for a new middle school package B building addition and renovations as submitted. That's what we had for Right, that's right. Um, do, you've heard the superintendent recommendation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Hot seat. That's right. This is there's a series of change orders that went into this one. So you have anything from structural steel. Uh, there's some items related to civil on site, and then we had a couple of items that were done in the gym, the existing gymnasium. So. Any questions on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Item C. I recommend the board approve the owner architect agreement with Lathan Associates Architects PC in the amount of three hundred fifty thousand dollars for cafeteria improvements for various school locations as submitted. For the superintendent's recommendation, do we have a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Second? Second. Questions? Commentary? These more specifically are involving kitchens. Uh, in our older kitchens, we've got some structural, infrastructural type things that need attention. Uh, that's what this will address. Awesome. Questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Item D, I recommend the board approve the 2019-20 renewal of the Alabama Trust for Boards of Education general liability errors and omissions liability fund participation as submitted. For the superintendent's recommendation, a motion to approve. Second. Second. And this is, we're just part of the ENO group, correct? It's the that's whole right. board trust thing, yeah. That is, that's correct. The legislation approved several years ago, we pay into that uh, for, in this case, general liabilities, the others is automobile. Okay. Questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Item E, I recommend the board approve the 2019-20 renewal of the Alabama Trust for Boards of Education Automobile Fund participation as submitted. For the superintendent's, superintendent's recommendation, do I have a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Second? Second. Like you said, same thing as the first, just yes, about the yeah. yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? 
Item F, I recommend the board approve Mayor Hanson as the Sixth Bank Committee representative. For the superintendent's recommendation, we have a motion to approve. Second. Second. I'm reluctant to approve Second. Meredith Hanson for anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is a policy no, requirement as far as Sixth Bank Committee each year, so uh, Mr. Donaldson Pass has done that, and we wanted to give the opportunity to Ms. Hanson. So <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All right. Under personnel item nine, I recommend the board approve the personnel actions as submitted. For the superintendent's recommendation on personnel, we have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Any questions? Thirteen. All in favor? Aye. Now let's see if I my script. All right. I will entertain a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of discussing the preliminary negotiations involving matters of trade or commerce and a matter involving safety. I want to remind all of us of the following. No action can be taken in executive session. There will be no vote taken in executive session. No minutes of executive session will be made. I request that Dr. Todd Freeman, Dr. Patrick Martin, Ms. Courtney Brown, and Mr. Jeff Downs attend executive session. I estimate the executive session will last approximately 30 minutes. Following the executive session, the regular board meeting will reconvene. Mr. Boone, can you comment on the motion for an executive session? You've stated it correctly. You can do this. Thank Under you. the Alabama Open Meetings Act. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We will be about 30 minutes. I don't like to catch tonight, so it will be about 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Regular session is reconvened. All right. Just a couple of updates for you on um, construction. The first one is regarding uh, Dolly Ridge new classrooms. We're moving in later this week into the new classroom addition. Yeah. Uh, and what Dr. Martin has got the moving team ready to go. They'll be in. We are giving the teachers some release time. Dr. Rainey, I believe two days. I think. That's right. Sorry. That's Dr. Yes. Rainey's team up here is going to be on site working with the kids and whatever capacity is needed, whatever substitutes are needed to give them a little bit of time. We did not want to ask them over Labor Day weekend to spend their time up there. Yeah, that's cool. So that's good. Uh, well played. We had a chance to do that, and I'm really excited about it. And Barry is the other thing. I, I have individually discussed this with. Uh, each of you just my thought processes about where I thought we ought to take this project but uh, currently the renovation and new construction is scheduled to finish late November the Columbiana Drive project which has not started yet is scheduled to be 120 days that pushes us on into late December uh, the baseball softball field project is scheduled to be 150 days that pushes us on into January <coughs> Uh, I am, have had really no compelling reason to think that while the building's finished would be the right time to move because of the variable of Columbiana, the baseball field, which is independent of the school, but nevertheless there's construction on the site. Uh, we have had the similar size that we have right now at Pizzitz in years past, probably 2006 and 7, we had some over 1,200 numbers. Uh, so we've been cozy at times in the past. Uh, ultimately, I would want us to move when it's the best time for our students and our staff. The Christmas move is achievable, but it is wrought with risk. Uh, and so much so, I feel like at this point, we, we needed to make the call to say that uh, there really is no, there really is no compelling reason to, to move during the school year. It would have to be during Christmas. I, I find that to be very risky at this point. Yeah. So I, I, I was, uh, it, it said that what we need to do is delay that and actually occupy it in August. Uh, 2020. I think it makes sense for a lot of reasons. We can actually spend the second semester readying the facility that we, the way we need to, instead of just taking it moving in. Uh, there's a lot of quality control things that can be done during that time. I want to spend a little bit more time studying traffic based on the changes we've made this year, how that one's going to impact, looking at our start times. Let's make sure we got this well organized. Uh, we can manage the move more simplistically than the one we've done this year, so summer doesn't concern me. Uh, but it gives us time to start owning the campus more. Uh, we'll summer with uh, thinking about ways to incorporate a 50th anniversary celebration into occupying the new school that, in fact, we pulled kids from. You yeah, know, the system to start the system. 50 years ago. So we're thinking things like that to make it a uh, community celebration. So I think it'd be a good move. I spoke to the faculty this afternoon just to inform them what I wanted to share with you. And 
and that's what we have right at this point. And the bid was good, right? We did the bid for a year, so we already have it bidded. Yes, right. yes, something. yes. We try to cover. My pastor did a good job, just contingency planning on that. So it's uh, it has been un precedented in my experiences and I think the contractor even said the same to me never seen a renovation quite like this one this has been tough and as you know evidenced in the tent change order you approved tonight and there's another pretty decent one coming uh, on, a, on a, uh, the parking the drive scenario that we've had to, to uh, deal with so. would there be anything are there any like big visits all school kind of deals that we could do in the spring yeah. over at the yeah. new campus. Mr. Pennington has, has been developing some thoughts about how we might use art space or gym space or ways to start. It'd be kind of cool to get them exposed to, to it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. opportunity yeah. for open houses. Yeah. 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 Soon to be no That's right. Uh, so uh, just kind of a soft opening yeah. in some ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about that. We can take a breath here and get ourselves focused and, and get that move going. So that's, that's what we have in there. Sounds good. Good for everybody. Man, I'll tell you, um, unrelated, well, kind of related though, but all the redistricting we did on Tessa, absent the singular discussion of Dollar Ridge traffic, everyone has raved about being in their new schools and all that kind of stuff. So, a really good opening. Commentary has been great across the board. So, a lot, a lot of good, hard work to get to those stages. And uh, you're right, it's been really good. Traffic is, you know, it's what we thought it'd be on Rocky Ridge. We've been, there's been a lot of efforts with the county to try to deal with some of the flow out there. It's gotten much better as it typically does. It will get school. much better when we take 25% yeah. of that campus off and boom, yeah. it's it. But so, we, you know, yeah. we adjusted yeah, times based on freshman campus. We kept those in play. I want to study it more. I do want us to look at the traffic flow with visits opening. Do we need to make any adjustments? I want to make sure we're as scientific as we can be about you know start times make sure we've got those right but it gives us a chance to reassess <coughs> how we did this year and be ready next summer so excellent and would any of the three of you like to make a public comment <laughs> <laughs> we could too you're just when, would you want to say anything yeah. hot dogs yeah. fox one circle you want to say anything everybody <laughs> all right <laughs>